Hi there, welcome to a new video. Uh, this week I'm just going to do a bit of drawing in my sketchbook and uh, you can watch me draw. Okay, sound good? All right. Well, today uh, I've got a topic that's been sort of percolating for the last week or so. And the topic is sort of inspired by this. Uh, I have a six year old daughter and um, she loves watching TV and films and she loves Netflix and more in particular she loves watching Labyrinth which is handy because that's my wife's favourite film so it's a summer holidays and I've come downstairs a few times to watch, see them watching Labyrinth together and loving it um, yeah she thinks it's a great great film but I blew her mind this week by telling her that the guy who played the Goblin King is the same guy that wrote her favourite song, All the Young Dudes. She really likes that song. Um, and she was like, really? I said, yeah, this guy written by a guy called David Bowie. And she has since declared herself David Bowie's number one fan. Um, which is incorrect, because that's, cause it's me. No, no. <laughs> that's bigger fans. Uh, I did see Bowie performance. Uh, he was touring with uh, supporting the Heathen album and it was at Manchester Cricket Club on the on the pitch and uh, yeah it was a great show um, god that must be 20 years ago easy easy 20 years ago anyway the big thing is um, this week's topic uh, which I am going to uh, give you the um, 10,000 view 10,000 foot view right now which is this be more Bowie um, and what do I mean by that? Well, I see a lot of artists who draw some great comics, uh, but it feels like they are strongly attached to their style. Their style. You can't see me. I'm doing big finger quotes here. Style. Um, yeah. So like, you know, so they'll put a page up and says, "Well, there's no hands or there's no feet," and they go, oh, "That's my style." No, that's not your style. That's just that's something you used to constrain yourself with or it's something that you don't want to deal with so you don't deal with it and you don't deal with it by saying it's my style so um, the thing I love about David Bowie is this he had a career that lasted what 60 years roughly 1969 was his first big hit with what was it uh, Space Oddity and he was doing all kinds of things I mean there's a playbill of him as a support act for T-Rex and he's a mime He's doing mime, you know, not singing songs, not songs that he's written, not doing a cover or anything. He's miming. That's a. T I mean, that's that takes some that takes some guts, doesn't it? You got a rock band opening of you. You've got a room full of people wanting rock music and rock bands, and you come along, trapped in the plastic box, trapped 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 in the in the glass box, and walking against the wind. Um, yeah, that's that's a that's a thing. But he wasn't afraid to sort of reinvent himself, and you can see it. You know, he, he uh, as a, uh, as I understand, it, he created these personas to sort of um, it probably in the same way that Daft Punk have the helmets. You know, there's, there's no, you can't really say who's who. You don't know who they are. There could be any person on these them helmets, and it's just, I think it's the same to a certain extent with the personas. And it meant that um, Bowie could write albums about or as a persona so the first album uh, Ziggy Stardust it's a, it's a, in effect it's a concept album you know this alien called Ziggy Stardust who's an alien rock star comes to earth to say you've got five years here's you know some hope and you know there's a, there's a story that unfolds in that album and then the next album was that is that was that Aladdin Sane I think it was Aladdin Sane and then something else but there's all these characters that he created and then he sort of decided to sort of go to Germany and he did, was it Low Heroes and Larger or something like this? Uh, again, a totally different sound. And then there was a sort of the blue eyed soul sound uh, in, what would it be, Station to Station? Station, to Station something like that. Um, but there's definite. You can, you can, you know, David Bowie's song, but the genre is always different. You know, you, you recognise it because you recognise his voice. Um, but you don't, you know, it's not always the same song. Or the same style. 
So you could, you know, something like a Starman is very different to Space Boy, but the, thematically they they have a lot of strong links. You know, he's, Bowie's quite Bowie's quite a lot of sci-fi references in his in his sort of songs, and you could argue that's a star, but I'd say it isn't. I'd say it's um, a reference. It's just something he, he did. Like Clint Eastwood made a lot of westerns. But he also directed things like Million Dollar Baby, which is not about box, uh, not about cowboys. It's it's boxing, right? So, if you're watching this and you have, um, if you, or you're about to pitch a story to an anthology, and it's going to be, oh, I'll just do my usual sort of anime character um, wearing a cape, hitting a guy in the city. I urge you just to stop, take a step back, and say, can I do something slightly different with this? Can I do something that's pushes me in a, in a new interesting direction can I give myself a constraint to work within can it just be you know, if I'm working in colour should I work in black and white for this if I work in black and white should I put some colour in you know? if, I'm, if I do a lot of photo release stuff how about if I go cartooning how about if I just do an abstract comic you know? the, the panels are sort of almost abstract or expressionistic and most of the, most of the story and narrative is driven by dialogue and captions. I've done a lot of silent comics in the last few years. Uh, Windbreaker is not a silent comic, it's got, there's lots of dialogue, there's lots of captions, there's sound effects, there's all sorts going on. So when I came to actually write uh, Windbreaker it was a bit like do, uh, having written five episodes of Space Crash I was very consciously didn't want to make another silent comic. Um, so from there, from there with the, the, the core principle, the core concept, we sort of expanded that out and, and put together a narrative over 28 or so pages and you know it's different, it's a different, it's going to be a different beast to uh, Space Crash but that's fine. Um, so yeah, in closing, in closing, if there's an opportunity for you to try something new, go for it. Try a, try a one page comic. If, you, if, you, if you're doing 24 page one shots, try to, uh, like a four page comic. If you're doing lots of short comics, try expand that out. I'm not saying jump straight into a 200 page graphic novel, but maybe you go to a 12 page comic. Or maybe you work on it a bit and you turn it into a 24 page comic. What I'm saying is, every project should be an opportunity, or can be an opportunity, for reinvention. So, yes, let's all try to be a bit more Bowie. Well, well, I hope you found that interesting, um, or educational, or fun, or a distraction for about nine minutes or so. Um, if you did like the show, if you did like this, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good, good stuff. Uh, we'll see you in the next video, okay? Alright, take care. Alright, bye now.